andrewhogue.com and I'd like to welcome to the studios right now Mr. Anders Bueller, currently touring Australia with uh, The Mighty at the Gates and formerly of The Haunted and your fourth time in Australia, first time as uh, at the Gates moniker and uh, hello Mr. Bueller, welcome to andrewhogue.com. Good day, mate. <laughs> It's a pretty generic insert comment. G'day, mate. A lot of people say that, but you obviously are a fan of Australia because you've been here. Yeah, fourth time, I think. Haunted I three think times? This is a sixth time. I think. Sixth time? Yeah. I think five times we've haunted, or four. Four or five. At least four, maybe five. Wow. Your memory's better than mine. So, how's the show's been going? You've already uh, wrapped up Brisbane, and Sydney was last night. Tonight we'll be in Melbourne at uh, Billboards, following by uh, tomorrow in Perth at the the the, uh, the capital. How has the reaction been, considering that uh, you know most people know the band more the Haunted, but have been craving sort of at the gates, and then the reunions have been happening the last couple of years. What have you expected from the Australian audiences with uh, at the gates material? It's pretty weird without the gates because you never know what to expect, really. Yeah, uh, mainly because you haven't played. Australia before, so all we know basically is like pre-sales of tickets and stuff like that. But uh, we're really overwhelmed. It's been going very, very good, and people seem to love it. You know. Well, let's go back to when Slaughter of the Soul came out because a lot of people now reflect on the fact that sort of mid '90s metal was dying and all that sort of stuff. And now you got a whole new generation of fans who hail that record as kind of the the master of puppets of, of you know, that sort of uh, era or their, their generation at least, how just what a, an amazing, timeless album it is. How do you feel about that now, knowing that people are just so, you know, entrenched in the record, but at the time when it came out and people said that, as you know, you know, metal was in a bit of a lull, that it kind of, it, it received great acclaim, as you said, and then the fact that it's now so overwhelmingly acclaimed, uh, is it kind of a, a real big surprise for you guys? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, back in the day, we didn't uh, have that success. Yep. Um, we just made an album and uh, really, yeah, we worked our asses off, you know, trying to best, uh, make the best record ever. Um, but it wasn't until like late 96, 97, yep. when we heard uh, like the Gothenburg sound um, being coined mm -hmm. because we haven't heard it before. And then, I mean, I guess Slaughter Soul became like a timestamp, important timestamp. Yep. And it wasn't until maybe early 2000s when uh, bands like Killswitch and Unearth. Well, a lot of people sort yeah, of... Uh, and, and the New York, uh, Connecticut, uh, like hardcore yep. scene as well. Which we, we, we got a lot of help from them, actually. Which famously became the uh, metalcore sound, as some would say. Yeah, maybe. But, I mean, for us, it's still an important record. Yep. And uh, together with, like, maybe... Justice Race from In Flames and uh, the Gallery same year. So I mean, do you still feel that when you play the record now, even though it is over fifteen years old now? Uh, I mean, obviously when it came out, it was fresh and exciting, and then when you sort of put on the back burner and that the gate split up, and then the Haunted kicked in, and then obviously knowing the demand had come back, was it really weird just to sort of get back into playing the album? Did you realize, damn, this album was so damn good? I think this uh, Slaughter of Soul is more. Uh, in line to what we did with the Haunted later, you know, like yep. uh, arrangement type. Uh, the older stuff is more hard to get into, like Gods of Grief and Red and Sky Sour stuff. A um, lot more technical and weird arrangements, and basically due to the old guitarist, like Alf Svensson. Yep. So those were kind of hard to rehearse and get together to sound good. But I guess um, the Slaughter songs, I mean, yeah, they're still to this day. Sounds fresh. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Well, we do have Anders Biola from At The Gates here in the studio with us at andrewhogue.com. He's going to play one of his favourite tracks now from one of his favourite bands. Then we're going to come back and talk a bit about uh, what's happening with him and uh, recently leaving The Haunted and uh, his solo project as well as many other things that's happening on the go. So uh, you're a fan of the Mars Volta, Mr. Biola. Yeah. Uh, I was pretty shocked when I heard the first record. Uh, totally amazed. Yeah. Uh, like a perfect mix of... Uh, uh, progressive rock uh, done good and in a, in a modern way have you seen so them live yeah yep and uh, kind of a disappointment actually really <laughs> yeah because they, they they didn't play any of their hits it the was hit uh, singles. Yeah, no they were like uh, improvised jams yeah, for 20 improvised minutes jams for 20 30 minutes and it's just boring so i mean very good musicians and all that but you know no <laughs> well this is a 4 minute uh, 29 uh, second track so I'm sure you'll be, uh, be able to get into this one. This is the Mars Volta with a track called Teflon on andrewhogue.com. The Mars Volta there, the track called Teflon. 
chosen by Mr. Anders Biola, who's currently in the studio with us here on andrewhogue.com. Touring with uh, At The Gates, the Mars Volta did release their sixth studio album in March this year, titled Nocturna K. Very progressive, but uh, not to the liking of Mr. Bueller on the uh, live front, because he likes the hit singles, three minutes and 30 second tracks, rather than 20 minute epics. Yeah, uh, The Widow is my favourite track. Yep. And some of the first album, like the five, six songs, uh, five, six minute songs. Now, let's go back to, uh, I guess, all things The Haunted. Now, uh, it's a band you've been in for many, many years after At The Gates disbanded. And so that's the band you uh, sort of joined in six records, great records too. Very, uh, you know, I guess a progressive band, not using the term progressive, you know, tightly. I mean, started off very much, very, you know, in the vein of sort of Slayer thrash. But as the, the band developed, you know, you really did move uh, the band's sound quite heavily. So what sort of got you to the point where you decided to uh, recently leave the group? Uh, basically, it came to a point where I didn't feel up to it, you know. Yeah. I tried to make some new music, but... Uh, I didn't feel like it yep. anymore. So I, I, will, I look back at what we did. Um, I'm very happy and kind of uh, proud of what we did yep. with those albums. Where each new album was like a totally new experience somehow. We, we never, yeah, re, hence the word we never reused the formula, you yep. know, and we tried to progress and... Did you find that that confused a lot of fans? Because I know, again, some people want to keep a band in a specific sound because yeah. they love their sound so much. And when they move on, it's like, oh, I don't yeah. like... I guess people were pretty frustrated with that. Uh, I, I wouldn't, you know, drop names here, but yeah. I, some bands do the same record over and over again. Yeah. But, but I, we had to because we got new singers and the, the singer is the hardest member to replace. Yeah. And I think the most... Uh, uh, you know, the, regarding personal taste. Yeah. The, the singer is the most critical member, you know. So when Peter came back after Morocco, it got more melodic, you know, somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we started out like a, maybe a bridge record called yeah. Revolver, which was thrashy, but it had like the blues elements on certain songs. And and The Dead Eye, I think that's the peak. Yeah. That's the album I love the most. Like when The Unseen came out, a lot of people were just like, what the hell's going on here? But yeah. I listened to it as a Haunted fan and have been for years and following the band's sort of progression musically, uh, to me, it was still The Haunted. It was just, again, another album. You're not sure what to expect. And yeah. it's it's interesting how it's almost like some bands just can't win. If they do the same record, people say they're doing the same crap. They change. Uh, people just can't deal with that. So I think it's sort of <laughs> the way some humans are. They won't let go of a certain thing, but they're still going to complain about sticking with the same thing because they're going to get the same result every time. And it's almost like, you know, bands really can't win uh, in any respect. But uh, moving on with The Haunted, obviously your twin brother um, Jonas is still in the band with uh, uh, Patrick Jensen. And they're the only two sort of members in the band. Have you discussed things with uh, Jonas about, you know what he's going to do with the haunted now or you've just sort of moved on from that uh yeah we talked i talked with both jonas and jensen and they are going to continue yeah uh where that leads or what will happen we, we don't so know they're yet, auditioning but... new members now they're looking for yeah yep uh i think their first kind of goal is to find a singer yeah and then it's easier to find a drummer well, in Sweden, and, and, and there's some amazing musicians, so I'm sure yeah. you're not going to have a hell of a hassle trying to find uh, other... Yeah. But as I said earlier, like the singer is the most critical. Yep. To, we have, they have to have a good singer, so yep. it's a good starting point. But I, I guess when Unseen came out, uh, I have respect for the fans that don't like that, that album. I think it's more the fans that like the aggression of The Haunted, and maybe the aggression lacked a little bit on Unseen. But the, the songs are there, and I think it's a perfect continuation of The Dead Eye, in a sense. We have Anders Biola here from At The Gates, currently touring Australia. They're playing a show tonight in uh, Melbourne at Billboards, and then wrapping up tomorrow in Perth at the Capitol. We're going to get, uh, we're going to play a track, one of your uh, Gothenburg buddies, Soil Work, from the amazing record Natural Born Chaos. They're from Helsingborg. Actually. Oh, they are, okay. Blah, blah, Berg, wherever yeah. they are. Yeah, like... <laughs> Anyway, they're your buddies, and we're going to hear a track called Follow the Hollow. Then we'll come back and have a bit more of a chat about uh, the Anders Biola solo record as well. So stick around for that. This is andrewhogue.com, and this is Soil Work. <laughs> 